What happens going forward if we have a really strong earnings season? The man to answer the question is David Barnson. He's the author of this book, Crisis of Responsibility, and he manages a ton of money himself, don't you? I guess you could say that. I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, right. Now, uh, we are told that these profits are going to be really good, and we're going to see these profits come out in the next two weeks. If they are really good, like up maybe 20% from last year, do you expect the whole market to go up some more? I, I wish I could give you a simple answer, and that's probably what you want, but it isn't, it isn't a simple question. Uh, they will be up 17, 18, 19, 20% from last year. They will be overall. The problem is there's going to be a high dispersion of results. You're going to have some companies exceeding it, some underperforming expectations, so you're going to have a lot of different results from different companies. But the key ingredient is what the market's already baked in. If they've baked in 19% earnings growth and we get it, it right. doesn't rally the market. Well, it's the question. guidance forward. So J.P. Morgan this morning is very interesting. We're just getting started. What did they say? They had great results. They beat both revenue beat by almost a billion dollars. Earnings beat substantially. However, they announced that going forward, this whole tax reform and everyone's just going to do stock buybacks. It won't help anybody. Adding 400 branches? Hmm. Adding 400 branches? I thought brick and mortar was dead. I thought that there, bra banks had too many branches. They have, they're, they're talking about incredible capital expenditures. You already know about their whole new office deal they're doing yeah. here in Midtown. So there's companies spending money. That's what you have to look for out of this tax, out of this earnings season, oh. is out of tax reform, what are they doing for the rest of 2018, 19 with their capital allocation? So I've got to go through all these earnings reports. Well, I'll do it for you, Stuart. It'll be <laughs> for a fee. You want to come back? This is sort of what but, I get paid to do. But seriously, that's what you've got to do. It's not the absolute profit level, and compared to last year, Year. No, it's what the top guy says. Going forward, yeah. it's going to be like this. In, in a normal FX. quarter, that's the case, but especially this quarter because of the impact of tax reform. And this is the first quarter where tax reform has had an actual impact. That's right. This is the first time. That's okay. Right. Why are you buying into energy companies? A, a much better question would be why is anybody not buying into it? And I'm really serious about this. We have a high level conviction on everything that we're buying, but I have a super high level of conviction about this right now with no sensitivity to timing. That always gives you a little uh, ease. Listen, oil right now is sitting at $67 and nobody is talking about it. What was the highest performing asset class in the first quarter? Tell me. Oil. Okay, so we have all this volatility. You know how critical I am of President Trump on this trade tariff related issue. This volatility, VIX through the roof, people worried about the Fed. There's a lot of legitimacy, interest rates moving around, yet oil continues to move higher and the IYE, the sector of energy stocks, is down 2% on the year. That decorrelation between the sort of um, stability coming into the commodity prices in oil and gas and how that is not playing out through the MLPs, through the integrateds. Exxon at $78. Is I don't think I'm going to ever have a chance to buy it at this price You think again. that's a, a spectacularly low price for Exxon? Spectacularly low price. You buy incredible it, you balance it. sheet, incredible dividend yield, great management, global penetration, diversified business units. They benefit up, mid, and downstream. And they're down 10% on the year with oil up about 12%. So this is basically a play on the future price of oil. You no, 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 thing, no, no. It's, it's more highlighting the uh, value that we see because it's disconnected from the price of oil. Look, if oil comes back to 60, it doesn't change the thesis that the MLPs are still going to be producing the a lot what? of liquefied natural Mass, gas. Master limited partnerships. Yes, I'm sorry. The Thank pipelines. You. Sorry. Forgive <laughs> Thank me. Thank you very much indeed. You no, know, but the oil and gas pipelines, this is something the Trump administration is friendly to. They get it. You, you've heard Secretary Perry talking about the story to export liquefied natural gas. This is a real story. They have wind behind them, but they're not seeing it in the stock prices. We have dividend yield in between 5 and 8% for high-quality oil and gas pipelines. Ooh, wait, wait a minute. What does Exxon yield? Uh, Exxon's yielding more around 4%. I was talking more specific to the pipelines. Uh, Chevron about 4, Exxon about 3. Yeah, but that's interesting. If yeah. you can buy at 78 and get a 4% dividend yield and you think the thing's going up from here, you get a capital gain and a nice dividend too. Not and, bad. And, and they raise the dividend about 30 times in the hmm. last 30 years. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right, Barnson, I think you made a pretty good case <laughs> there. Good case, yeah. High conviction, Stuart. High conviction. <laughs> you know, we don't buzz you for an expression like that. But if I used it, they would. Well, David Barnson, you're all right. Thank you very much indeed, sir.